order and ask for approval of the minutes of the last month's meeting. Supervisor Simpson and Supervisor Sieber, any adjustments or corrections? Hearing none, all those in favor? Aye. Uh, Aye. All right, at this point I will turn it over to Brian from Emergency Services. Thank you, Supervisor Wood. Uh, number one is a request for resolution to uh, have this group approve and pass along to the board our new county bioterrorism, bioterrorism plan. Uh, this is a plan that is an annex to our comprehensive emergency management plan. It's one more section, and it was just updated. Motion by Supervisor Gerard, second by Supervisor T Taylor. Any discussion or questions? Yeah, what, are, what new are we going to do to terrorize the county? <laughs> really? <laughs> My job isn't to terrorize. I'm the guy. I'm the guy on the other side. <laughs> all right. Any other questions? Hearing none. All those in favor? Uh, aye. Any opposed? All right. Okay. Number two. Number two is very similar. This is to approve our update to the mass care plan. We have a motion. Supervisor Fraser, seconded by Supervisor Simpson. Any other discussion on this? Hearing none. All those in favor? Aye. aye. Any opposed? All right. We'll move on to number three. Number three is uh, travel approval for myself and Deputy Coordinator Combs to attend the ILO Intelligence Liaison Officer Conference in Cooperstown. Supervisor Gerard, do we have a second? Supervisor Frazier, any discussion? Supervisor Simpson. Could you tell me what the Intelligence Liaison I knew that was coming. <laughs> uh, in, the, in the realm of Homeland Security, for years, the bulk of all Homeland Security, critical infrastructure, cybersecurity, all that stuff ran through a liaison in each county. And if I'm not mistaken, under Sheriff Lamry is the contact for, for our Sheriff's Department. Yeah, it's actually uh, Lieutenant Stephen Stockdale. Okay, thanks for the update. Um, what they found is that the fire and EMS people are out in the field all the time, hundreds and hundreds and hundreds, thousands across the state. And that's just more pairs of eyes. So they developed a program where the ILOs, the Information Liaison Officers, would go out to the fire and EMS groups and give them a precursor to kind of things to look for who to contact, not to make them agents, not to make them guys sneaking around, but if they see something, to give, make them, give them some awareness of what they should be looking for. So we've been presenting these classes in the county. Uh, I am the ILO now, and uh, I can't necessarily cover everything, so they suggested we have two in at least each county, so uh, Scott has stepped up to do that with me. Supervisor Sieber? Brian, I don't see a cost here at all for there is no cost. Covered. Okay, by covered. By yeah. By by if you look at the rationale, conference fees and lodging were paid for by the state. Oh, I could have read on. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. All right, any other discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? All right. Um, we would like to apply for the fiscal year 15 Homeland Security Grant. Um, I don't have a lot of details to give you. The reason we're bringing it to the committee now is we know it's coming. I can't give you exact details as to the exact dollar amount because we don't have that yet. But we're being told by the grants folks that when it does come out, the turnaround time may be very short. That being the case, if we already have approval to apply, we're, we're just asking for approval to apply for it. Motion by Supervisor Gerard, second by Supervisor Frazier. Any discussion? Supervisor Sieber? Oh, she was quicker, bud. Sorry. Um, I perhaps I need to read a little farther, but um, which, if that grant goes through and you apply for it, what, what's the match? That was the there is no match. No match. Homeland Security grants have no match. Is that on my paper too? No, I'm sorry. <laughs> Supervisor Taylor, did you have a question? No, she asked my question. Very good. <laughs> Any other questions? Hearing none, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? All right. Uh, we have nothing under uh, pending. Discussion on the fireworks legislation. As you recall, at the last, uh, those of you that were at our last legislative committee meeting, I did bring up concerns that the fire service have about the proposed law allowing the sale of sparkling devices. We have done a lot of research, and I just want to bring to the committee, I know I'm not going to be able to sway anybody as far as whether you pass this law or not. Uh, it was passed in Saratoga, it was passed in Essex, and they're being sold all around us. So I understand that. What I did want to do was make this committee and the supervisors aware that there are other things involved in this than collecting the sales tax. The state of New York, which has not yet produced the permit process, they have told us what the law is. Um, they promise me every day that it's going to be on their website is what's necessary for someone 
to actually apply to get a permit to do this. Um, so if, if someone thinks they're going to jump on it now and get a permit so they can be ready for the June 1st uh, date that you, you can begin sa uh, selling the fireworks, I'm not sure they'll have the permit process done. I hope so. Um, so that's number one. That's being done by the state. The state is collecting the fees for that. And some of those fees are relatively hefty. But again, that's being collected by the state. And they tell us that the money that they do collect for those permits are to be used for firefighter training. Not sure what that means. That goes into an extremely broad scenario as to what they're going to use that for. Brings me to my next concern. There is about six pages. I apologize, Martin. I haven't gotten this to you yet. I got another sex series of text as to the rules and regs and the, the laws that are involved with this that involve a lot of things that I think could come back on our codes division. And I've talked to Charlie Wallace about this. We've talked to codes in Queensbury, the fire marshal, and in Glens Falls. And my only concern is that I want everyone to be aware that some of this enforcement collection, looking at who's doing what, who's answering complaints, if somebody says, hey, the guy next door to me is selling fireworks, he doesn't have a permit. All of that is going to fall back on what they call the AHJ. That's their common term, authority having jurisdiction. And that's the county. So, again, I'm not trying to scare anybody. I just, I would like to, I will present to Martin additional information and to all of you. I don't have it all for today. I haven't even seen it myself as far as the website goes. I've talked to the gentleman in charge of this project for the state. Uh, he happens to live in Pottersville. And, um, he says they're pushing really hard to get this together, but they are not prepared for it yet. So I just, uh, I felt rather than try to do this at the hearing that I would want to try to give you guys as much heads up as I can as to what's going on. And I will provide you more information. I don't have it today because I physically don't have it. But uh, Martin, you look questionable. No, no I'm good. Okay. Um, the There's a number of things in here the state police is supposed to maintain a list of what counties are eligible on their website. And there's all these things that are in the law that when you go and look for these things, I don't think they may not even know about it. So I just want to let you know that I'm concerned. The uh, fire and EMS advisory boards have both asked me to uh, present our concerns to the committee as far as this fireworks law. We know we can't stop it but we feel the more awareness we can give everybody, the better off we'll be. Any questions on that? So far, there's only been one county in the state that um, the fire service, you know, bringing hundreds of people to meetings and stuff, was able to actually turn it around, and they did not approve the law. That was Niagara County. But everybody else has approved it. So well, I say that. All those that are doing it so far, um, it's all been approved in all the other counties. So. Supervisor Taylor? Yeah, I guess... Uh, Sheriff, and, and my question goes to the sheriff. I hope I can answer it. Oh, you can answer it. I just have to, to be right or not. <laughs> <laughs> oh, boy. Uh, right now, it, it's illegal to have sparklers in the fountains and all this stuff. Do we actually enforce that? There's not a lot of enforcement. We do get a lot of complaints every year. <coughs> There's not a lot of enforcement. Not it, it, to my knowledge. I'm the sheriff. We don't, we don't do a lot of enforcement. Uh, any arrests for uh, fireworks violations would be relatively infrequent. Yeah, you, you know, in this entire scenario is for the sale of fireworks. Once you walk out the store with them, you have to be 18 years old. Once you walk out the store and you hand them to your 10-year-old kids, you know, that's, there is no control at that point. <coughs> and that does make it hard. And I can see enforcement of Bud's people getting calls for a neighbor mad or upset that he thinks the kids next door are going to set his yard on fire. Um, I can see those kinds of complaints out there, and uh, hopefully, as uh, Sean said, they won't be too common, but we see those. It just means there's going to be a lot more of this stuff out there than there was before. Um, Ice Jam, we right now are keeping track of the rivers in our county. Uh, I did another tour last night. Everything at this point is okay. There are some channels through the the ice that normally creates a problem for us. The um, temperatures have been good, warm during the day, cool at night, slow 
reduction in the ice, slow reduction in the uh, snow melt or the uh, snowpack that's in the woods. So we are working with the National Weather Service every day. We get an update from them as to what they feel all these things are. And right now they have uh, suggested we don't have any conference calls this week because they feel the, the risk is very low right now. So I just wanted to pass that along to everybody. We also do reach out to the highway folks are really good. They have people on patrol and our fire and EMS folks, if they see something changing or they hear something or all of a sudden something breaks loose, um, they will let us know. And that usually comes through the, the comm center first and um, we'll stay on top of it. Not that we can do anything about it other than get people out of the way. Uh, number three, I brought to you at the last meeting that we needed to fill the uh, second deputy EMS coordinator's position. We did go through a resume and interview process. We had nine applicants. We interviewed the three uh, that we feel were the best, and we have opted to hire Travis Howe as our second deputy EMS coordinator, and he'll be starting on April 1st per uh, what we discussed at our last meeting. That's all I have officially. Yeah, uh, Brian, could, have you thought about going back to the fireworks thing, um, maybe talking to the Post-Star and uh, other papers to maybe put something uh, around 4th of July, um, safety, something on safety? There's no question that, uh, you know, that kind of fireworks safety scenario is very important, and uh, the local media has been good in the past, but we will make a special attempt, um, in theory, <laughs> In theory, according to the law from the state, if you have a permit to sell fireworks, you will also um, be providing safety literature and stuff like that. Uh, I'm not sure I'm seeing all that happen, but you know that's what they say is going to happen. Interesting part of this law is you can't keep the fireworks on site. If you are a store and you get a permit and you buy all these fireworks to sell between June 1 and July 5th, after July 5th, you have to have the distributor come back and take that you have to turn the excess back in. It can't, you cannot store that in your facility. And then come December 26th, when it's open again to sell, same thing, December 26th to January 2nd. So I can see some interesting things there. Our concern is not the stores. Our concern is the people that during that window buy a whole bunch of this stuff. And now it's in their garage or basement or places that we don't know about. So, well, if, if you did a, some sort of concerted thing to, you know, talk about exactly that, don't do this. You know, I agree. It may, that it may seem okay, but, you know, this is what can happen. Well, know. yeah, and as I mentioned at the last meeting, my biggest concern is, you know, we can always put the fires out. My concern is the children and the people that get injured. Um, I do have, I will supply in the next packet that I give you uh, statistics on emergency room calls and what it costs for those emergency room calls. Uh, just because of the uh, fireworks and children, so that's the tough part. You got to be 18 to buy them, but once you hand them out, they can be anywhere. Anything else? Okay. Thank you. Well, thank you, Brian. Move on to the sheriff now. Good morning. Good morning, sir. You ready? I am ready. Well, hopefully this will be quick. Um, first request is uh, permission to send Sergeant Kevin Sellen to Civil Supervisor School in Saratoga. And the cost is 300 bucks. First by Supervisor Gerard, second by Supervisor Brock. Any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor? Uh, second one is permission to send Lieutenant Stockdale to the Child Abuse Summit in Rochester, New York. There's uh, no cost other than our travel cost, yes. Right. Motion by Supervisor Taylor, second by Supervisor Sieber. Any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. 
Any opposed? Okay. Third one is to send um, Under Sheriff Lamery, Sergeant Smith, Officer Terry Combs, Jesse Wittenberg, Kevin Ordway, Bill St. John, and Jason Palmer to the Tactical Officers Training Conference in Syracuse. The cost is 3272, all to be paid for by asset forfeiture. Motion by Supervisor Simpson. Do we have a second by Supervisor Frazier? Any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? All right, it carries. Um, D, uh, re uh, re request resolution authorizing the chairman to execute an amended health service agreement with Correctional Medical Care and Corporation for ratification at the full board meeting on. 417, and uh, I think Martin is going to discuss that a little further. Certainly, Martin, would you? Yes. Um, just by way of history, <clears throat> uh, Resolution 659 of 2013 authorized an agreement with Correctional Medical Care to provide comprehensive medical care for our inmates at the jail. Uh, the first year was 14. The, con the, the resolution and the contract authorizes two one-year uh, extensions, so we're, we're into 15. The, the prices involved for year one, if you recall, were about $1,155,000, year two, one hundred seven, year three, one million two six two. In September of 2014, and this is really why we're here to discuss this item, um, there was an assurance, what's known as an assurance, that correctional medical care entered into with the Attorney General's office. Um, the only impact it had on us uh, is that Correctional medical care was required to restructure their business operations and how they deliver medical care. They needed to incorporate professional corporations which would be licensed to provide medical care in New York State. They've done so. They have a medical PC for the medical services. They have a dental PC for the dental services. The assurance with the Attorney General said that once that's done, they need to enter into, they need to re-examine their contracts with the various uh, facilities, and if necessary, they need to enter into new contracts with the facilities. Back in the fall, we knew this was going to happen. We knew we were going to get a new contract, um, but we didn't think it would happen before the end of the year. So in order to protect the county, we extended the current contract, and we did so uh, back in November, we actually entered into an extension agreement, so there's been a continuum, continuum of care, no interruption of care. Um, and um, then early in 2015, you'll recall we had a request uh, to uh, make sure that, uh, to ensure that there's 24-7 coverage, uh, there was a, an additional RN that was added, some additional hours that were added, and that was addressed by Resolution 4-7 of 2015. Um, they presented us with a new comprehensive contract. Best I can tell, all the pricing is the same. Doesn't look like there's any impact financially to the county at all. The reason why I think we need to discuss this today and get approval today um, is because the contract necessarily becomes sort of a multi-party contract. We have not only correctional me medical care as a party to the contract, not only the county as a party to the contract, but we have CBH Medical PC, they're the medical provider, and SM Dental PC, they're the dental provider. So we're actually entering into a contract with those PCs. With this, at the same time, we're entering into a new contract with Correctional Medical Care for 2015. Um, the RN services are provided, so it looks like we're having all the comprehensive care, everything's in place. They do have some new terms, um, and some modified terms that I'm going to be talking to the sheriff and the undersheriff about. But it's important to correctional medical care, and I support this. It's important to them to have their new contract executed by April 1st. Why is that? They need to get this contract approved by the Attorney General's Office and the State Education Department. And I don't think it should be too difficult for us to approve this contract based upon county attorney review for ratification at the April 17 board meeting. Again, I see no physical impact to the county whatsoever. This is just the sort of mem memorializing confirmation of the restructuring of their business operations. It has nothing to do with the level of care. The care is going to remain the same. The services are going to remain the same. The cost is going to remain the same. 
It's just how correctional medical care is delivering that product to us. So um, I hope I've explained that in clear, concise terms. Um, and um, so I would be looking for um, a resolution uh, motion out of this committee to authorize the chairman to execute the new contract upon county attorney review and approval subject to ratification on April 17th. Thank you, my Supervisor Gerard. Do we have a second? Supervisor Simpson, any other questions or concerns? Supervisor McDevitt. Uh, can we enter into a specific agreement with the uh, Attorney General's office? Uh, uh, the, the short answer is, is no. The assurance is between Correctional Medical Care and the Attorney General's office. Um, in the contract, one area that I've identified, Supervisor, that I want to talk to Correctional Medical Care about adding a provision <laughs> is ensuring that Warren County will be indemnified and held harmless for any noncompliance by Correctional Medical Care or their two PCs, noncompliance with the assurance. Any other questions? Hearing none, all those in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Okay. Um, I think you need some other contracts, don't you, Sheriff? Yeah, it, it, can I, uh, when I sent this out two days ago, I wanted to make sure that Joan had it so she could put it out, the agenda out on the uh, internet, but uh, um, some things come up afterwards and I was wondering if it's okay if we can bring it from the floor. How's the will of the committee? Fine with that? All right, uh, go ahead then. Uh, I'll give it to the under chair. Uh, the first contract we're looking to renew is with Watch Systems. They provide the software for sex offender management and tracking. Um, we currently have an MOU in place and have since I believe 2009 with Warren Falls Police Department and the Warren County Probation Department. Uh, the cost is $3,500 a year. That cost is split amongst the three agencies. Um, I have spoken with uh, Chief Arnold and Director of UC Probation. They've all indicated they want to continue this arrangement. Um, we've reached out to Watch Systems. We had a new contract drafted. It's had attorney review and we're looking forward with it. The cost is remaining the same. There's actually been no increase. Motion by Supervisor Taylor. Do we have a second? Supervisor Frazier, any discussion about this? Supervisor Schieber. Is it common in other counties to see that shared um, aspect to it, having multiple agencies within a county sharing in the cost, or is that something unique because of your working arrangement? Well, I, I think with the watch systems, it may happen across the state, but I'm not sure. Um, you know, when, when this first started, Glens Falls PD um, and us agreed to take it on, and, and we got probation involved as well. I don't know whether you can answer that. I think, I think there may be other places in the state that do it, but I'm not sure. When the um, presentation was originally made to us, I believe, again, it was in 2009, we saw a value in what it could do for us, um, being that probation also monitors sex offenders, and uh, obviously Glen Falls Police Department has the same interest that we do. Um, we reached out to them, they've been aware of it, and we thought it was in everybody's best interest that we share the cost. I just thought I, I wanted to highlight that because, again, I think it shows um, or puts particular emphasis on the fact that our county, our law enforcement agencies are collaboratively working together and finding a way to reduce costs instead of, you know, putting the bill to one agency at a time. So um, I appreciate that. Thank you. Any other questions? Hearing none, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Aye. Next one. Uh, second is to renew a maintenance agreement with Well Communication Service that provides maintenance and repair of the communications console equipment. Um, again, it's had attorney review by uh, Martin Operative. Uh, the price remains the same as it has been in the past, and it allows us to extend it for up to three years, locking in that rate. Motion by Supervisor Gerard. Do we have a second? Uh, Supervisor Brock, any discussion on this one? Supervisor Schieber? Uh, you said the cost remains the same. What is the cost? Oh, I'm sorry. I believe it's uh, 10800 a year. That sounds right. And is that document something that could be sent out to us after the meeting? We got it right here. Absolutely. We'll give you a copy. Okay. The, uh, the cost has been 10800 It's going to remain the same. And one thing that we asked for is uh, an agreement locking in that rate for two additional years, which they did accommodate us for. Great. Thank you. Supervisor Taylor. Uh, have you reviewed it yet, Martin? 
Uh, n no, but um, it, it'll, I, I will, fortunately. Probably this should be subject to Contingent on the uh, review of the county attorney, I think. Uh, excuse me, Martin, you have reviewed this agreement. Apparently there was no problem. In, in, Martin, in Martin's defense, he gets a lot of stuff from our office to review. He has reviewed it. <laughs> Apparently I stand corrected. I have reviewed it. <laughs> Thoroughly, I might add. <laughs> the last one is something new for our we, office. We, we should vote on that one. We have a motion and a second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Okay, now we'll go to the third one. Uh, the third one is... Um, something that was brought to our attention. Uh, there's grant monies out there um, to build foot fiber for um, police departments, emergency services, uh, municipalities, and we, um, again, had the county attorney review the agreement. The county attorney wanted an addendum to what this agreement was going to be. Um, it's called the Development Authority of the North Country. They have apparently received um, grant money to run this fiber. Um, <coughs> what it's going to provide for is to run fiber to uh, a, lo a location on Maggie's Road in the town of Warrensburg where we're looking to put up a radio tower. Uh, it's going to provide for fiber service to the Warrensburg substation and provide for fiber service to our headquarters right next door. Um, what's good to know is typically it's very expensive to build this type of infrastructure. When we relocated our substation from um, <coughs> uh, right in the center of Warrensburg uh, near the bandstand, just up maybe about half a mile up the road to where we're currently located, it costs tens of thousands of dollars <coughs> to have fiber moved up to that location. Um, with this agreement, there is no cost to put this fiber in. There is no cost to use this service for the first three years. There is a cost for years four and five because it is a five-year agreement. The maximum that they can charge us is $700 a month per location for years four and five. By taking the service for three, I'm sorry, for free for three years, we're avoiding paying Time Warner, which we currently have contracts with now, um, so we're not going to be paying those costs. We are adding a location because we currently don't have any service up to where we want to put this radio site. Um, we, we're estimating that right now anywhere from a sixteen to eighteen hundred dollar savings per month once we switch over to this system. Um, again, Martin has reviewed everything and he feels comfortable with the agreement. All right, do we have a motion and a second to get it on the floor? Motion by Supervisor Frazier, second by Supervisor Simpson. Questions? Supervisor Sieber. All right. It's okay. Uh, <laughs> so if I'm understanding this correct, how many locations are there? That we would like to do? Yes. Three total. Okay. So the first one to three years, there's no cost. Four and five, it's 700 per month per location. Theoretically, it would be as much as $2,100 a month for years four and five. And then, but once you factor in the um, savings from years one to three, at the sixteen to eighteen hundred a month, you're clearly seeing seeing a saving. Yes. Currently, depending on the location, and perhaps Mark Neal could speak better to it than I can, we pay anywhere from eight to nine hundred dollars per location for a length. And then, it's subject to obviously uh, contract renewal and negotiations after. Correct. Uh, and. Five. My, my concern was what happens after year five, because right. the rates could be, we don't know what the rates are going to be. Um, at that point, if the rates were to become something more expensive than um, we're paying now, we could simply go back to Time Warner and renegotiate. What it's, what it's providing for, quite honestly, is competition in the market, which is a benefit to the municipality. Any other questions? Hearing none, all those in favor? Aye. You opposed? Okay. Curious? Uh, we have one uh, topic for discussion, and just to advise the, the committee that uh, we filled two positions in corrections uh, since the last meeting. Uh, one was a resignation. I believe they uh, uh, that person got hired by the state docs, so we had to replace that position, and one was a retirement. Uh, the impact to the budget is uh, the new hires, it's a $13,791 savings. 
Anything else you can share with this morning? Yeah, I just I want to ask the chairman. Um, Sean spoke briefly with you about the the the, the radio stuff that we're, we're talking yes. about. Do you want to bring that up now, or do you want to wait? Do you uh, want to we'll discuss that at committee level, or do you want to wait on that? I'd like to get a little more information, but okay. I know that we need we need to continue in the continue on with this radio upgrade. It's okay. Well, you can tell. I guess I guess they want you to go digital. Or Sean, do you want there to? There is you, a. Do we have time? Do, do you want A little over, but we could have a brief okay. update. I think that would be wise. Okay. In a nutshell, on Brian, please step in if I miss something or misstate. Uh, there's interoperability grant money that was originally supposed to come available back during the beginning of December. There was a change at the Department of Homeland Security and Emergency Services and leadership. The grant was put out, I believe, beginning of February, the application. Um, it was a question and answer period. The grants have to be filed by April the 15th of this year. Um, originally, we were told the grant monies would be made available late spring, early summer. At this point, we're told, and we're, I'm sorry, we're being told that the grant money probably won't even go to a contract process until the end of the year. Um, what does that mean for us? So even if they do award the maximum award, which is $3.5 million, our building season begins once the snow disappears off the mountains and that we lose that time period to get up there as far as utilizing that grant money. There is no guarantee that we would receive anything from this grant. And the other part, and Brian, perhaps if you could touch on this part, they are pushing that we be uh, P25 phase two compliant, which is digital. We currently do not have a digital system. And if you recall, when Televate did a analysis of our radio system and did a pre presentation back on October 17th to the full board, they estimated the cost to, to stay analog was somewhere around six million to go to analog, with, or I'm sorry, digital was somewhere around eight million dollars. That eight million dollars does not include all the equipment that the fire departments have, that the EMS agencies have, that they just recently spent a lot of money to get narrowband compliant radios. So even if we were to apply and get money, it's not going to cover everything. It's not going to cover new radios in the cars. It's not going to cover repeaters, things such as that. I spoke with um, Robert Barbado. He's the gentleman that actually oversees the grant, and he said it wouldn't cover that type of stuff. And that's since been verified by the actual grant paperwork. So I'm going to sit down with Kevin after the meeting and discuss some ideas that we have and how we can move forward. I appreciate the update. Anything else this morning? That's it for us. All right. Then I'll take a motion to adjourn. Supervisor Frazier, Supervisor Brock, all those in favor? Thank you.